Hello, friends. Welcome to This Day in Jack Benny. I'm John Henderson. This episode is from November 13th, 1949. The Jack Benny Show was broadcast live on the radio. The reason we have these episodes now is because they were recorded onto records known as transcription discs. Although they would never rebroadcast the episodes, at least not for another five years. This is an original episode, although it's sort of a takeoff of what they did on May 8th of this year. The broadcast we just finished was one of the sloppiest shows I've ever heard. Later this same day, Jack Benny was set to appear on the Red Skelton radio show. Did I hear the phone ring? Yes. <laughs> Phil Harris could be heard on another network on his own radio show. And as we look in, the doctor is just finishing his examination. Well, there's nothing wrong with you organically, Mr. Harris. Your nervousness must be caused by some outside influence. Tell me, do you drink? <laughs> I just take a little for special occasions like holidays, birthdays, Mondays, Tuesdays. <laughs> All right. Another thing, Mr. Harris, do you lead a regular life? Oh, sure. I eat well and I get plenty of sleep. Mm, what time do you get to bed? Well, I'm always in bed by 10 or 11. Noon at the latest. In popular music, there was a song called Mule Train. Mule Train! Ha ha! Mule Train! Or, if you prefer the symphony, you could listen to an orchestra conducted by Arturo Toscanini. In sports, it was college football season, and Notre Dame was dominating. Scores, and it's Notre Dame all the way. And finally, the actor Ronald Coleman was working on a movie, co-starring Vincent Price and Art Linkletter, called Champagne for Caesar. Is there something special about me you dislike, Mr. Bottomley, or do you hate me for myself alone? Oh, I don't hate you, Mr. Hogan. He merely thinks you're the forerunner of intellectual destruction in America. Yes, nothing personal. If you enjoy these episodes, send me an email, jackbennypodcast at gmail.com, and find more episodes at thisdaybenny.com. And enjoy the show. The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Gentle tobacco, smooth tobacco, tobacco that's deeply enjoyable to smoke, puff after puff. That's Lucky Strike tobacco. Yes, friends, at the tobacco auctions, Lucky Strike buys truly fine tobacco and pays millions of dollars more than official parity prices to get it. And you are the reason Luckies are so particular to get fine, ripe, mild tobacco. For it takes fine tobacco to give you a fine cigarette. And LSMFT. LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The kind of tobacco you'll smoke with deep down enjoyment. For it's mellow, mild, from first puff to last. Yes, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky. Surely you want all the enjoyment you can get from a cigarette. So why not smoke the smoke that's famous for fine tobacco, for enjoyment, for taste, for mildness? Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Yes, make your next carton Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, on last week's program, everybody made so many mistakes in reading their lines that Jack felt it was necessary to call a special meeting. At the moment, we find the cast assembled in Jack's living room. <clears throat> now look, kid, I want you to take what I'm going to say in the spirit in which it's given. I'm not angry. I'm not upset. But I did feel it was necessary to call this meeting. All right, Jack, what's the meeting about? Yeah, let's get it over with, huh? Well, Phil, as I said before, I'm not angry. But on last week's program, I never heard so... M Dennis, Dennis, you're not paying attention. Get away from that fishbowl. Well, last time I looked in this bowl, there were only two goldfish. I know, I know. Now, kids... How come there are three of them now? Because the first two fell in love and got married, that's why. Now, kids... Well, if they just got married, why'd they take in a boarder? 
Look, they didn't take in a boarder. The little one is a baby. Oh, yeah. The one on the right is the mother. No, no, Dennis. The one on the right is the father. You could have fooled me. <laughs> Dennis, will you do me a favor? Oh, babe? for heaven's sake, Jack. You call us over here for a meeting, so let's get on with it. Yes, Jack. Tell us what's on your mind. I'm trying to. I call this meeting to find out why there were so many mistakes made on last week's broadcast. All right, so we made a few mistakes. Is that a reason for you to get mad? I told you, I'm not mad. Libby's right, Jackson. You're burned up and you know it. I'm not burned up. Jack, there's no reason for you to get so upset. Upset? What makes you think I'm upset? You look like a football coach whose team has to play Notre Dame. (laughs) All right, all right. You kids can have your little joke. And one couldn't be a star of my magnitude without being able to take a few jibes from his underlings. (laughs) But, as I said before, I'm not mad. All I want to do... Benny. What do you want now? Are you sure the one on the left is the mother? (laughs) Yes, Dennis. The one on the left is the mother. The one on the right is prettier. All right, all right. So the father is prettier than the mother. Well, that doesn't make sense. Sure it does, kid. Take me an hour. <laughs> well, be quiet. Okay, Jackson, okay. I'd like to get this meeting over anyway. What kind of mistakes did we make last well, week? Well, for one thing, Phil, you don't even know how to speak the English language. If a word has over two syllables, you don't even know what it means. I may not know what it means, Jackson, but when I speak, I have perfect diction. Phil, as long as you brought that up, I've got news for you. I've heard better diction coming out of the exhaust pipe of a greyhound bus. <laughs> Believe me, Phil, the only thing that sounds worse than Harris the speaker is Harris the musician. Hold it, Jackson. Hold it. <laughs> may interest you to know that I just got an offer to make a guest appearance with Arturo Toscanini. You? You got an offer from Toscanini? Yes, he wants me to be first whip snapper when he plays mule friend. <laughs> well, that you can do, I know. Jack, if you're just going to ball out Phil, why did you call the rest of us? Because you all made mistakes last Wait week. Wait a minute, Jackson. I didn't make no mistake. Oh, you didn't, eh? Rochester. Yes, boss? Open the phonograph and play that record of last week's program. Okay. Now put the needle where I told you to... Could you baby? Could you, could you, coo? Dennis, get your hand out of that fishbowl. <laughs> anyway, you're tickling the father. <laughs> Now, go ahead, Rochester. Start the record where I've got that little chalk mark. You say you didn't make any mistakes, eh, Phil? Just listen. This is the part where we were talking about your picture, Wabash Avenue. Now, listen. Well, it ain't exactly retakes. You see, there's a scene in the picture of me singing, that's what I like about the South. Uh Uh-huh. And because of the foreign market, I've been down to the studio dubbing in the lyrics in French, German, Spanish, Greek, Portuguese, and Italian. Uh Portuguese? That's all, Rochester. Did you hear that, Phil? Did you hear that? Torture, geez. I thought it sounded cute. Play it again, Rock. <laughs> Never mind. Jack, I don't think it's fair of you to ball Phil out. I've been waiting for you to speak up. <laughs> Rochester, put that other record on. The one marked Mary. Jack, if you're trying to tell me that I make a mistake now and then, you needn't bother because I know it. Mary, I don't mind the little fluffs you've made like the time you ordered a chiss sweet sandwich. <laughs> you make little mistakes like that every now and then. But, Mary, what do you think was your biggest mistake? Leaving the May Company. <laughs> I won't argue that point. If you want to eat and get fat, that's your <laughs> Now, I have a record here. Well, Mr. Benny, are you sure the one on the left is the mother? I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> and, Dennis, stop interrupting. I want to get this meeting over with because I have to go to see Ronald Coleman on some very important business. Now, look, Mary, you say you didn't make any mistakes last week. Look, I want you to hear a recording of a program we did a few weeks ago. Rochester, put it on where I've got that little chalk mark. Yes, sir. Now, listen, Mary. Mary, all the networks are nice. And it's about time people realize that there's no animosity between them. There isn't? Of course not. Now, take CBS. They even put Johnson's Wax on the floors. <laughs> Jack, CBS didn't put it there. So many stars have come over, they've tracked it in on their heads. 
their shoes. <laughs> they must be acrobats. <laughs> That's enough, Rochester. That's enough. You hear that, Mary? The word was supposed to be shoes. Now, how in the world did you possibly arrive at the word head? Jack, that happened four weeks ago. I didn't deny it. I said I was guilty. You sentenced me to three days at hard labor. I painted your house. Now, let's forget it. You won't forget it until you finish the window sills. I want them green. Jack, is the meeting over? No, no, Don, not yet. I want to show Mary a fluff that she made on last week's program. Rochester, play that first record again. Yes, sir. The place I'm looking for is somewhere around the middle. Go ahead, play it. Isn't it wonderful out here on the ocean? Yes, Don. There's nothing I love better than a no-obligation crew. Well, oh, that's not it, Rochester. Move the needle further down. Yes, sir. Okay. This is a little rough. Well, it can't get too rough for me. You know, during the First World War, I used to be on the Navy. A little further down. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Play that last part again. What's the matter? Jack, you said you were on the Navy instead of in the Navy. I did not. Oh, you didn't, eh? Rochester, play that part again. Okay. Jack, you better sit down. The ocean's a little rough. Well, it can't get too rough for me. You know, during the First World War, I used to be on the Navy. <laughs> well, Dad, shall we dance? <laughs> Bill. Jack, how could you make a mistake like that? Yeah, the one on the right is the mother. <laughs> Dennis, be quiet. Oh, on the, the Navy. <laughs> you know, Jackson, your face is the color of my eyes. Okay, Jack. What have you got to say now? I got this to say. I did not make a mistake. What? what? I said I did not make a mistake. But, Jack, we heard it distinctly. You said you were on the Navy. I said it because it's correct. When I became a sailor during the First World War, they put me on board a ship called the USS Navy. Therefore, I was on the Navy, shut up, and meeting the jerk. Now, uh, Phil, you and Mary can leave, but Don, I want you to stay. And you too, Dennis. I want to hear your song. So long, Jackson. Bye, Jack. Hmm. Tell me I made mistakes. All right, Dennis, what are you going to sing? Well, this is an old song, Mr. Benny. It was written by Ben Oakland and Herb Magnuson, and Georgie Jessel wrote the lyrics. Oh, Georgie Jessel. What's the name of it, kid? Roses in December. Good. Let's hear it. Things 
come true Oh, shadows never Sunshine forever Roses in December For you Dennis, that was beautiful. I don't know, it seems that lately your voice is getting better and better. Hmm. <laughs> you didn't even say goodbye. <laughs> oh, Rochester. Jack, uh, you said you wanted me to wait, too. Huh? Oh, yes. Now, Don, the reason I asked you to stay is because I didn't want to embarrass you in front of the others. <laughs> well, Jack, what did I do? Every week this season, we've been using the quartet to do, to do the commercial except once. Mind you, only once were you required to do a straight commercial. And the mistakes you made, the fluffing of lines was simply awful. But, Jack, I remember that commercial, and I don't recall making any mistakes. Oh, you don't, eh? You don't recall any mistakes. Just sit down, Don. Rochester, play that fourth record over there and start it where I made that chalk mark. Now, listen, Don. You don't remember any mistakes. Just listen carefully to this. Go ahead, Rochester. Ladies and gentlemen, luckies pay more. Millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. Millions of dollars. That's a lot of money. But the makers of Lucky Strike spend it for fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. So when you light up a Lucky, you're always sure of real smoking enjoyment. Yes, when you're smoking the cigarette of fine tobacco, you know you can expect enjoyment and plenty of it. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. That's the end of the commercial, boss. It is? Why, certainly, Jack. I, I didn't make one mistake. Well, I guess I was wrong. Thanks for staying, Don. So <laughs> Goodbye, Jack. Hmm. I could have sworn he made some mistakes in that commercial. Oh, well, it was nice hearing it again, anyway. <laughs> Say, Rochester, I gotta run over and see Mr. Coleman now on some business. When I get back, have a little lunch for me. I'd like scrambled eggs. Sorry, boss, we're all out of eggs. Oh. Well, as long as I'm going next door to the Coleman's, I'll borrow a couple. I'll be right back. <laughs> Their butler doesn't answer the door. I don't think he likes me. Well, hello, Benita. Oh, hello, Jack. <laughs> ah, gee, Benita, you look wonderful. Thank you, Jack. Here are the eggs. <laughs> Benita, how did you know I wanted to borrow eggs? Well, I saw you coming up the walk, and since it was butter yesterday and sugar the day before, it had to be eggs today. <laughs> oh, yes. So we've completed the cycle, haven't we? Yes. <laughs> yes, we have. Now, is there anything else you might want? Bread, cream, flour, lettuce, turnips? Well... We're pushing turnips today. <laughs> No, just the eggs will do. Well, That's now, a... maybe you could use some cookies. Cinnamon, jam, jelly beans. Oh, no, no. I gave you plenty of jelly beans. You gave me jelly beans? You gave me jelly... When? Two weeks ago, that night when you rang my bell and said trick or treat. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, Minnie, I took such pains disguising myself as little Bo Peep. How'd you recognize me? Because little Bo Peep had lost her hair. <laughs> yes, I didn't know where to find it. Well, thanks for the egg. You're quite all right, Jack. Goodbye. Oh, oh, just a minute, Benita. The main reason I came over was to see Ronnie. They have some very important business to discuss with him. Oh, I'm sorry, but Ronnie's at the studio. He's doing the final scenes on his picture, Champagne for Caesar. Oh. 
And if you'll excuse me, I was just getting ready to drive out there to see him. Well, that's swell. I'll go out with you, Benita. Oh, uh, uh, Jack, Jack, no, I, uh, I have to make several stops on the way. And and I, oh, I don't mind waiting. Oh, know. well, for goodness sakes, we won't be able to go after all. I've just remembered my car has a flat tire. Oh, well, don't worry. We'll drive out in my car. Your car? Sure. I'll go and get it. You then... win, Jack. We'll drive out in mine. Good, good, good. Let's go. Here we are, Jack. Stage five. Now, you've got to be very quiet in there because... I know, Benita, I know. I've made a lot of pictures myself. Oh, yes. I forgot. Thank you. Uh, come on, let's go in. The director says it'll be a few minutes before the next scene. They have to change the lights, Mr. Coleman. Well, thank you. Call me when he's ready, will you? They've, uh, they've got a lot of extras on the set today, haven't they, Benita? Yeah. Oh, there he is. Hello, Ronnie. Oh, hello, darling. Only three more scenes and I... Uh, hello, to... Ronnie. Ronnie, how are you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, why, Jack, what are you doing here? He came out with me. He wants to see you on business, darling. Yeah, sure. Gee, it's good to see you again, Ronnie. Shay. <laughs> I, I forgot to take the egg out of my hand. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ronnie, it isn't my fault. Stop wiping it off on my dress. Uh, Jack, uh, normally I am not a curious man, and I don't pry into other people's affairs. But how in the name of heaven did you happen to have an egg in your hand? Well, Benita loaned uh, me a couple of them, yes? Oh, I'm glad you didn't borrow any Vigoro. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, Ronnie... I have some business I want to see you about. Now, now Jack, please. I, I don't know what it is, but you'll have to wait. This is our last day of shooting. We're behind schedule, and we still have to do the most important scene in the picture. But, Ronnie, this business will only... Everybody take... on stage! All right, Ronnie. We're all ready to shoot the scene. I'm ready. Oh, hello, Dick. Benita, it's good to see you. By the way, this is Jack Benny. Uh, Jack, this is Ronnie's director, Richard Wharf. Well, it's nice meeting you, Mr. Wharf. It's a pleasure meeting you, too, Mr. Benny. Uh-uh, uh-uh, just not to him, Dick. Don't shake hands. Don't shake hands. <laughs> I'll explain it to you later. All right. Now, Ronnie, this is the one we rehearsed this morning. Remember, the main feeling is that you're expressing contempt, not hatred. Merely contempt for your business associates. Very good. And, Dick, don't you think it would be better if instead of sitting, I stood behind the desk? Yeah, let's try it that way. Quiet, everybody. Quiet on the set. Action. Gentlemen, at last I find courage to speak. I can't let this go on without a word of warning. You men are the forerunners of intellectual destruction in America. And I, for one, refuse to see the educational system of this country ruined by silly, simpering... Whoops! Drop my other egg. <laughs> Uh, I'm so oh. sorry. Goodness sake. Cut! Mr. Benny, would you please... No, 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 let me handle this. Uh, Jack, how many eggs did you borrow? Uh, two. Good. He's out of them, Dick. We can go ahead. <laughs> yes, yes. Go right ahead. Okay. Quiet on the set. Roll them. Take it, Ronnie. Gentlemen, at last I find courage to speak. I can't let this go on without a word of warning. You men are the forerunners Cut. of in... Sorry, Ronnie, it isn't your fault, but I noticed too many shadows in the background. Hey, Joe, turn up the arcs on the right platform. That's better. Now, Ronnie, go through the speech once more with the new lighting. This will be just a rehearsal. Okay. Gentlemen, I have finally found courage to speak. I can't let this go on without a word of warning. You men are the forerunners of intellectual destruction in America. Cut. That was perfect. Now, this one will take. Ronnie, uh, try to get a shade more contempt into your voice. All right, Dick, I'm ready. All right, good. Everybody quiet. Quiet, everybody. This is a take. 
All right, Ronnie. Camera, action. Gentlemen, at last I find courage to speak. I can't let this go on without a word of warning. You men are the forerunners of intellectual destruction in America. And I, for one, cut! Ronnie, I thought you had a little too much contempt in your voice. You see, I think that you should have done... You think? Mr. Benny, I happen to be the director of this picture. I know, but I'm trying to give you the benefit of my experience, Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, what was your name again? Worf, Richard Worf. Say, that sounds familiar. Worf. Worf. I've heard that name before. Very likely. I have a brother in San Francisco named Fisherman. <laughs> How could you? I wanted to beat him to it. <laughs> what? I've heard you on the radio. You pick on anything. <laughs> Look, Mr. Wharf, I'm only trying to help you. I don't need your help. Mr. Wharf, for your information, making moving pictures is not a cut-and-dried business. There's no sure way to produce a good picture. The only way we can learn is by mistakes. You better listen to him, Dick. He's made some buttes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, look, Benny, if you're going to stay here, you'll have to keep quiet. Now, hold it just a second, Dick. I'd like to talk to my wife, privately. Uh, Benita, will you come with me for a moment? Yes, Ronnie? Benita, why in the world did you bring Benny out here? But, darling, I couldn't help it. Couldn't help it, couldn't help it. Look, we, we, we've been married a good many years, haven't we? Yes, dear. And in all those years, we've never had any serious arguments, have we? No, dear. Well, Benita, I'm warning you. If a thing like this happens again, I'm going to pack my Oscar and move back to the YMCA. <laughs> now, do you hear? Well, stop waving your finger in my face. You're getting egg on my nose. <laughs> That's your fault, too. Ronnie, I hate to interrupt, but we're way behind on schedule. Let's finish this scene. Oh, I'm sorry, Dick. I'm ready. Okay, quiet, everybody. This is a take. Quiet on the set. Lights, camera, gentlemen. <laughs> At last, I find courage to speak. I can't let this go on without a word of warning. Jack! You men are the forerunners of intellectual destruction in America. Jack! And I, for one, refuse to see. The educational system of this country a ruin. Benny, will you shut up and get out from behind that desk? <laughs> I was only trying to show Ronnie how that speech should we be... We don't need your help. For heaven's sake, Ronnie, can't you get rid of this... This... Schlemiel? <laughs> Thank you. Look, look Jack. I don't mind too much. I'm used to you. But you're new to Mr. Wharf. Please leave the set. But, Ronnie... Ronnie, I can't leave now. I came out here to see you on business that's important to you. All right, Jack. All right. You've delayed the picture for an hour. You've ruined three takes. You've upset my director and caused me to argue with my wife. Now, what is this important business you want to talk to me about? Ronnie... Ronnie, do you realize that here it is, the middle of November, and you haven't ordered your Christmas cards yet? <laughs> now, Ronnie, I have some cards with beautiful winter scenes, and... Oh! Oh, my goodness, what happened? An arc light fell down and hit him on the head. Is he badly hurt? I don't know, but we better work fast. Lights, camera, action! At last, I find courage to speak. I can't let this go down without a word of warning. You men are the forerunners. Ladies and 
Ladies and gentlemen, help observe the first annual National Kids Day on Saturday, November 19th, and you will be helping the underprivileged children of your community. All funds raised in your city remain there for the benefit of the children of your community. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Lucky's pay more, millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. And that's mighty important to you because fine tobacco and smoking enjoyment go hand in hand. And LSMFT. LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Ripe, mellow tobacco that gives you a more enjoyable, a smoother, milder smoke with never a rough puff. Yes, Lucky's give everyone more smoking enjoyment, including the men who are expert judges of tobacco, the independent auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen, men born and bred in the tobacco business. Take Mr. Linwood L. Sturdivant of Lewisburg, North Carolina, a veteran warehouseman. He recently said, When you talk tobacco, you're talking my language. I've seen plenty of tobacco bought and sold, about 150 million pounds. And year after year, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine light leaf that makes extra enjoyable smoking. I've been smoking Luckies myself for 11 years. And that's an outstanding tribute to the real deep-down smoking enjoyment in Lucky Strike. So take a tip from the tobacco experts and light up a Lucky. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Yes, next time you buy cigarettes, ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman and Richard War for being with us tonight. A little later this evening, I'm going to be on Red Skelton's program. And be sure to listen in next week when we will have, as our guest, Sammy the Drummer. Good night. Day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos Sandy Show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.